Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Now, it's been about roughly two weeks since the last video, the fuel uh, cap, what do you call it, the caddy. And since then, you know, I've been still trying to get this part. Now, I know a few of you know or have known all along what I've uh, been after and obviously by now you've seen the title and the thumbnail so you'll know what I'm on about. But I'll just go back to the beginning just for the rest of you. So three weeks ago, I met up with R23L. I was going to do a, a few bits, you know, photo shoot, stuff like that, but that never happened. Uh, we got to where we were going to do it and I noticed that my car had started leaking. So as you can see, you know, dripping from somewhere, uh, quite a, a fast drip. You know, I didn't know what it was. And with a bit of, you know, poking around, um, pretty much worked out it was the coolant bottle. As you can see, as I say from that photo, that it dripped from the bottle down the, the metal arch liner and onto the drive shaft and you know lower arm. So yeah, it was a little bit you know hard great. So basically drove it back home uh, a little bit, you know, wondering whether it was just gonna pop and all go everywhere, but managed to get it back. Put it in the garage and tried to order a new part. Yeah, you may know, uh, you may not know, but for all you standard Mark 6 owners, you know, 1.2s to 1.6, the header tank you can buy anywhere, you know, your car parts, 20 quid, not a problem, easy as. Now, for anyone else like me who's got an ST, this is where the fun begins. Now, you can't buy them literally anywhere. It's pretty much a, a dealer part only. So... Basically, why has it taken so long, you know, three weeks to get a part? Well, maybe I'm just unlucky, you know, maybe some of you have had the same experiences. You know, let me know down below. So basically, yeah. Oh. Try that again. Um, yeah, so basically, why has it taken so long? Tried to find one, couldn't anywhere, you know, rang up a few places and they don't stop them. Again, you know, dealer only part. So, managed to find one on eBay actually. Uh, it was £88 and it was from a, I'm not going to say the name, but it was a, a reputable, you know, seller who was, you know, they sell them all the time. Uh, actually part of Ford. So, yeah, 88 quid. You know, I thought, why not? Going to have to do it. So, waited a few days. Yeah, that came. And as soon as I open it, it came with a split. So as you can see, but rather annoyingly, it came with a split. As you can see, from these photos here. Now, okay, so get got in contact with them, and basically, yeah, it took ages. Uh, the communication wasn't great. Uh, they said they were going to, you know, send a courier to pick it up. We never turned up. Got a bit frustrated, so went through eBay, had to wait the time, as you do, and then literally sent it back the same day, and they got it a day later, I think. And then it, uh, then it took, what, probably two or three more days um, for them to send the, the money back. So, great. Back to square one. Uh, so, I decided to take the, the plunge, uh, go to my local Ford dealer. Uh, they wanted £101, I think, so. Right, yeah, okay. Um, ordered that. I had to wait a few more days, turned up, that had a split in it as well. Unfortunately I didn't take any photos, but yeah, same split type, but different location. So again, they say they said the door to another, uh, that took ages. And then, probably as I say, this all taken three weeks. Uh, went yesterday, picked it up, and eventually got myself a new tank. Now. At this point, you're probably, you know, screaming or typing, you know, in the comment section, why don't I just get a second-hand one? Well, yeah, to be fair, I could have. It'd be a lot quicker. So you have to think that, you know, my car's a 5809 reg. It's the last of the Mark 60s. So if I get a second-hand one, they're going to be way over 10, you know, 11 years old. Um, they're going to be yellow, um, obviously, and they all go yellow eventually. But And the same thing may, may happen again, you know, in the future. So... Yeah, I, I mean, I wanted a new one. I mean, you know, nice shiny clear one. It's going to look good under the bonnet. You know, who doesn't want that? And you're also probably saying, you know, why didn't I get a metal one off eBay? I'll just put a photo of one now. 
Yeah, I can do. I mean, these are a little bit cheaper, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the eBay specials, they're 80 quid. To get a proper one, I know there's a, a few people out there that have said they do sell them, but you're looking at like £250. Maybe if you go on track, you know, and it gets hot, cold all the time, they are a good thing to have, but for normal road use, yeah, I'm hoping this one's going to be okay. So hopefully now I'll get this fitted and yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. So I've already taken the, the grill and the, the headlight out. I did that originally when I you know, first inspected the tank. So the grill's still off. I did put the headlight back on just to stop rain and all sorts getting in there while it was outside. So I'm just going to take the headlight back out now. Such fiddly things to get out. You can see um, yeah, on the ST we've got the, the two pipes there. On the standard ST, uh, sorry, on the standard Mark 6, um, just take that back out so I don't lose it, I put that in there. Uh, so on the standard Mark 6 and 1.6 you just have one on there. And you've got the, the big pipe at the bottom that goes underneath. So when I first had a look at this, I think there was a split down on this side down here and one at the back. So I'll have a look at those in a minute. Uh, when I get these two pipes off. Now these new tanks obviously they don't come with a new lid so you have to use your old one uh, but they do come with these bits which make things quite handy as you'll see in a minute. So first of all we have the two plugs on the top and these plugs just push in from the top and bottom and they pull out. This is a special tool you can get uh, to undo these but I don't actually have one. There we go the top one off. Now you just have to be careful of these pipes and there's a clip on this corner here uh, where the two wires clip into and you can just take those out and move the wires freely. There's one of them. So best not to get these mixed up so that's the top one. There. Now these are things that are on about good thing with these is that you can pop those on there and it should stop, well only these two obviously not the big one, but any coolant coming out of these top uh, little pipes. So I'm just going to do the same with this uh, bottom pipe. Oop. <laughs> Put that over there. Now I can see coolant in this one so I'm assuming this is going to go everywhere so I might just go and get a microfiber. going to push that under there. don't want it going everywhere. So, where are we? have that one on the standby. There. This one's coming off quite easy actually. See if I can push that on there. came out. Just pop that on. Oh yeah, I did forget to mention, um, yeah, to take this off, there's a, a 10, a 8 mil, I think, bolt on this side, so don't forget to undo that. So, and then the back of it, it just kind of sits on it. Yep, that's been leaking. <laughs> Sure, I get all that. So the back bit just sits on like an upright metal piece, and that just well, should just pull off. Um, so if you haven't done that, obviously it's a good idea to do that as well, like so. So now it's free apart from the bottom hose. Now you can see there's still plenty of coolant in there, so I do need to be careful because this is going to go everywhere if not. But now I should be able to get clear access to the, the clip that's on this bottom pipe. Now obviously I say when I take this off there is no plug so best thing to do if you still have coolant in it is take the pipe off and push, it, push this in the hole as quick as you can.
When I saw come here, phone. Now, don't forget guys that when you take these pipes off, that one and this one down here, um, don't forget to make sure that's upright because if not, you'll do what I've just done and end up with a wet foot uh, full of coolant. So don't forget about that. So right, need to find another microfiber because now the two that I'm using are now on the floor. So I'll try again. So push that under there. Got sticky hands now. Right, so I'll try and get this clip off. And then the pipe should just then pull off. So as you can see the clip's now out of the way. So this is the tricky bit where this is going to go everywhere. So, at this point all you can do, as I say, if you've got microfiber is pull that off and try and stick your thumb over it or something. So we'll see how we go. Actually, that wasn't too bad. If you try and tilt it up like that, then it doesn't come out. Now, as I say, there's quite a bit in there, so I'm just going to leave this over to one side. But before I do, actually, you might see it better. I don't know if you can... Especially there, look. You see all the cracks down that side? That's not good. Oh, and there's one there at the back as well. If you can see that, I'll keep my thumb over it. Actually, there's quite a few in this. I don't know if you can see them all on those at the bottom as well. So, yep, yeah, this one's definitely had its time. So, all dry, a little bit of surface rust. So, it looks like we're all good. And the only thing that's worked at the moment is my foot from where it leaked down there from this pipe. So we'll go ahead and put this one on. So fitting, as I say, is pretty much, pretty much just the reversal of taking the other one off. So that won't come off, so I'm not going to see that anyway. Might melt off when it gets a bit warm. So first one I put on is this big chunky one. pipe is now back on so that's fine so we just need to put these two back on so put that down there a few uh, clips just out of shot and these pipes that should be took off before I should Push back on pretty quick. Yeah, they can be put back in their clips. So, as you can see, that's the, uh, the bit that sits on I was talking about earlier. So, that just pushes on. Can't do it with one end. There we go on and that should line up which it does so they're the clips you can undo to get better access uh, this pipe and those are the two oops clips holding those pipes in which you can undo you know to free these up so next is this little nut let's pop that back in there so just tighten that nut up, as I say it doesn't have to be tight, it's just so this doesn't wobble, which it doesn't, so we're all good. So what I need to do is top this back up and I'll top this up back to the max line. Now after that's done we're not finished yet because uh, we may need to bleed the system and I'll explain that again 
uh, in a sec, just after we've done this. You can see now that the uh, level's on the max line. Can't see under it. <laughs> you can see it's on the max line. And that's back in place. Okay, there we go. But, as I say, still got to bleed the system, so I'm going to take that off before I forget. <laughs> Because to bleed the system, you do have to have the cap off. So, but as long as I know that fits. Okay, so I have the cap, so I'm just going to uh, put that on there so I don't lose that. Right, okay, so bleeding the system. So before you, well, before we start the engine, you need to make sure that nothing's going to catch inside. So first thing to do, which I've just done actually, is mop up any uh, coolant that may have been spilt, you know, from around there any underneath that you can get to and any in there from when I got a wet foot <laughs> um, you can see all down there um, <laughs> so yeah also and it's a bit dark um, so you can see there we go so you need to make sure that this pipe is secure you know it's very close to the uh, the pulleys um, you know and the, the belt so you need to make sure that all these are out of the way so once that's done then you know we can then go to start the car. So bleeding the system. You may have seen this before on a, a very old video that I did uh, in which I did the thermostat. Now this was way before you know, when I first started doing YouTube and I was too afraid to actually speak. You know, it sounds silly now but yes um, you know, I didn't have the confidence to do this. So I'm using the same uh, practice as I did then because it seemed to work very well when I replaced the coolant. Now that was actually last year, so the coolant that I've got in, I know, yeah, it is still very pink. So, you know, to make things e easier, if you were to drop the coolant, yes, it, yeah, it would save all the mess. But I know mine is absolutely fine, so that's why I've not done that. So to take from that method of bleeding the system, then I'm now going to do the same again. So the first thing is to make sure that on your uh, heater dials make sure that it's set to heat because if it's set to cold I think that opens the thermostat and it leads to air locks and all sorts. I know um, you know Lloyd uh, by the way if you haven't seen his channel go and check out. Uh, I'll put a link down below he's done some good stuff. Um, I know he, he thought he was having problems because he's been doing uh, his thermostat but it's turned out to be something else but I'll not spoil it for anyone that is wanting to watch that video because I think he's recording that as we speak. So yeah, so basically uh, heater on full and then we can start the car. Well the engine's running, uh, you'll be checking for any leaks, uh, sure nothing's catching. Check all the pipes if one's done. So I don't know if you saw then, you can see a few bubbles in there which makes you believe uh, there's a bit of air in the system. So uh, I will do the full uh, lead. I'll just uh, shut the window so you can hear me a little bit better. There we go. So uh, I've left the cap off the header tank, so you must do that. Now, the idea of getting all the, the air out, uh, unlike some uh, cars and fiestas, there's no bleed valve that I'm aware of. So this is the only way that I know that I've been told to do this and so the time I did it last it worked very well, so hopefully it worked well this time. So the idea is that we need to get the, the engine hot and all the air then will then push its way to the, the highest point, which is the header tank. Now what we're aiming for is the needle which is still on 60 which is on cold. We need that to get all the way to the top, uh, we need the fan to kick in and then once the fan's kicked in we know that it's, it's at its hottest point um, and then hopefully you know, it should be okay, all the, uh, all the air should have kicked out. There's two ways you can do it, we can either sit here for 10 minutes and let it idle which will heat the car up, it is rising slowly um, or you can yeah, pretty much go for it and sit at 4,000 revs and watch the needle pretty much you know, rise up. But as the car's been sat for such a while, uh, I'm going to let it idle for a while, you know, just so it heats up a little bit. 
and then I'll gradually uh, you know, run the, the revs up the gauge, so 2,000 revs for a little bit, and then two and a half, and then so on. I might not do uh, 4,000 because you know it is a Saturday, and you know I don't want to annoy the neighbours, especially with the, the exhaust and stuff. Okay, so the car's pretty much uh, halfway, so you might not be able to hear the fan, so it's best to you know, get out and just check it. So now it's up to temperature, I think what I'll do is, I say I'll turn it off, let the car cool down a little bit, Oop, just while I tidy up, uh, and then I'll reverse it out of the garage, uh, make sure there's no leaks or anything, and then I'll just go for a little drive. So we're back in the car again, and uh, you know, it's nice to be driving it after so many weeks, I forgot how, uh, how nip it is to be fair, uh, after driving it at 1.6 diesel. So it's not a, you know, a hard thing to fit, uh, just a little bit messy, you know, if you, uh, better say if you're draining the coolant then you know, it's not so bad I guess. But um, yeah, if anyone's watching this video and you know, think they can actually create head of tanks for less than £100 then you know, please be my guest because they're an absolute pain in the arse to find. As I say, if you've had this issue before trying to get them, or if you've bought them and they've been split, you know, let me know down below. Uh, you know, tell me your stories. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, oh, the brakes need uh, <laughs> a bit rusty. So yeah, uh, as I say, it's, um, yeah, let me know. You know if you enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, comment, you know, all the rest. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.